<laughs> How are you feeling tonight? Night out on the town. Who got some sleep last night? Who did it? Who did not get sleep last night? <laughs> and, and off and on. Well, we need some tips for the mamas who did not raise their hands, or we really need tips from these experts tonight. Um, but we're so happy that you're here. We're grateful for who's ever, whoever is watching the kids tonight. And um, tonight is really intended to help you really just be really, really supportive. And so you can have as many tips as possible to bring back into your cribs tonight and tomorrow. Hopefully you won't need them tonight, but tomorrow and onwards to get sleep for your kids and your babies. And most importantly, for also yourself too. Um, just from personal experience, last night my baby was up and I felt like a zombie all day. Anyone feel that way when they don't get sleep? And I really was trying, I was not resentful towards my baby, but it's just really hard to feel really good when you don't get sleep. So our intention tonight is to give you tips for your baby to sleep so we can all get sleep too. Um, so my name is Arielle Haskell. My, I have a company called We Love Arielle, and I am opening up a restaurant soon right nearby called Lucky Lee's. So I'm excited for all of you to come with, all, with your kids. I'm actually ordering hike chairs um, right now, so we'll be family friendly. Um, Jenny, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jenny Monette, and I have dedicated my career to helping moms on um, things exactly like this, sleeping and feeling good, and also being thoughtful when you parent, but there's no way to do that when you really can't think. So this is like a very great topic, because I think it, it, it starts with us, in being a good parent and meeting our needs, and we can't do that without our children sleeping. And coming from personal experiences with my daughter not sleeping, it really changes like who you are. You already change so much when you become a mom, and getting enough sleep is, you know, just so crucial to being the best parent that you can be. So I was really excited for this topic for personal reasons, but also because I feel like it's so crucial. And helping all of you. I created a blog for moms called Mom Mommies and helped create a new sport play with two other partners. And I'm just so glad to be doing events like this with moms like you and Dad's with amazing experts. <laughs> Jackies, if any dads are here. Yes, of course. Um, yes, and dads, I'm so sorry. I knew you were here, we spoke, but you're hiding. <laughs> um, and to bring amazing people like them to all of you. Um, Lauren Wolf um, has run um, Mom Groups here, and that's how I met her. And she's a certified infant and child sleep consultant and created a consulting agency mm -hmm. called Lolo Lullaby mm -hmm. and has two children. Yeah. How and old? Two and a half and four months. Four months. Yeah. So not only do you have professional experience, but a lot of personal yeah. experience too with and babies and toddlers. Right now. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I heard you talking about mm -hmm. how yeah. you didn't realize. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah get, we'll get there. We'll get there. And Sari Broda, who has been in my parenting groups that I've taught, and I got to really watch her amazing son Jonah grow up, and she came to me for sleep advice, which like, before I was a mom, I was like, oh, you just do this, and like, I'm like embarrassed now at how easy it probably made it sound. Um, but lo and behold, she's now a pediatric sleep consultant, also a lactation counselor, and created her own social media blog called The Chill Pill. And Ruby Seibel, Sibyl, Sibyl um, has worked directly with Arielle. Yes, She's the most amazing, amazing baby nurse ever. Mm -hmm. And I only had Ruby for two nights, but it was the first two nights that my baby was born, and it was really life changing. And um, we're really happy that Ruby is here tonight because she trains many, many, many baby nurses. Maybe one of her baby nurses that you've had. Um, she trains a lot of baby nurses within the tri state area and beyond. So we're really happy and very excited for her to be here tonight to share her tips on 
how to stay sane as a mother when or a father when you bring home a baby from the hospital, but how really to start integrating, um, even if you haven't already and your baby is, you know, your, your toddler is too, but how to start incorporating these nighttime rituals, nighttime routines into your life um, as quickly as possible with the baby. And her company is called Beyond Baby Care. All right, she was still a newborn care specialist, which I love. Um, okay, so did everyone put any questions into the bowl that's going around, or if not, that's why it's going around? We have questions that we planned all together, but that will help us answer your specific questions and needs better. So who here has a baby? Who here has a baby on the way? Awesome! Yay! And yes, who has a baby um, one month? Younger than one month? Oh, mama, we're so happy to be here. Yeah, most of us never left the house before. Oh, wow. Oh, mama, that's amazing. Uh, well, this is something for yourself and it's something for your baby, too. So I hope you're excited to be here. Um, well, I'm sure you're really excited to be here, but <laughs> um, we, we know that it will be helpful for you. Um, anyone have a baby two months and younger? Uh, three months? Four months? Oh my goodness, the little lunch computer see with you and us. Mama and dad is out, right? Um, five months and younger? Six months? Seven months? Eight months? Nine months? Ten months? Eleven months? Twelve months? And beyond. Okay, <laughs> awesome. And um, okay, so I'm sure you're here. And so how old is your is your kid? Uh, almost nineteen. All nineteen and months? Four. And four. Okay. And so you're here for both of them. Yeah, reaction from one. Reaction from one another, <laughs> yeah. which is a which is something that we've been hearing a lot, yeah. um, and something that I know that the mamas who have two children can relate to as well. Um Okay, and we do have some mamas here, um, and I don't know if I could speak on behalf of the father. Father, you only have an eight-month-old? Nine-month-old. Nine okay. Um, and some mamas have some toddlers as well, two years and up. Um, so, all right. All right, let's get to it. All right, so we would love to know, um, for the mommy who has never had a baby yet, um, but also for, you know, the, the parents that may have kids on the way in the future, what is something that you can do from the start and day one to really integrate? And also what is, you know, even if we didn't do that on day one with our own baby or child, what can we now integrate now? Anything that you really recommend focusing on like those few days, those first few days, those first few weeks? Why don't we start with Ruby? Okay. Yeah. So based on my experience, um, I get a lot of questions like that. Um, we're speaking about sleep uh, at this time, but basically in the beginning, especially for the first two weeks, um, sleep is like a second priority. What your priority is to feed the baby because we expect that upon discharge from the hospital, the baby's weight will decrease. So the majority of the time is like you focus on feeding the baby. Mm -hmm. So just forget about sleep. And routine, focus on feeding the baby. And once you get that weight gain or, or yeah, the, the birth weight back, then that's the time you start going to your next priority. Okay. Okay. So chill, stay sane, <laughs> get the baby's weight up, and that should be the first priority. And then focus on the sleep. Okay. Anything else to add? So I was going to say yes, definitely from day one, you should not be thinking about sleep training. <laughs> you should be thinking about yourselves and taking care of yourself and enjoying time with your baby and then a few weeks in like I want to say six weeks you can start setting the right habits so that you never have to actually break a bad habit and you can just put your baby in the right trajectory towards being a good sleeper um and something that I would recommend is try to get your baby to fall asleep in the crib or the bassinet not in your arms not in a swing um and not on drinking the bottle or on the breast just so that they get used to falling asleep on their own crib and learning to self-sleep. And the other tip I would say is that 
Um, when they're young, you kind of just want to listen and watch their sleep cues. So if they get tired and they're playing, you just put them to bed because once the baby's overtired, they have a much harder time falling asleep and staying asleep. So you want to do it, um, you know, as early as possible before you cross that that like, bridge and, and they get too too tired. So those are my so um, when would you recommend starting the, um, so I know that you said, I mean, a lot of babies will fall asleep on, and it's just like the best feeling ever, right? When you can make their baby fall asleep on you, and they're actually like going to sleep, that's just such a good feeling. But what would you recommend, like really setting that limit to put them in the crib or the bassinet or another I mean, you can't be crazy all the time. And you want to enjoy those so moments with your baby. So sometimes but, crazy, sometimes not crazy, always crazy. But but you really <laughs> want to teach your baby to self soothe in the crib by themselves, so that you never have to. Because if they learn to always fall on your boob, they're always going to want to sleep on your boob. So they wake up in the middle of the night, they're going to be like, "Where's my boob? Mm-hmm. I fell asleep on you, and now you're not here." So then you know it's harder to break that. So ideally, you teach them how to fall asleep by themselves in the crib. And you know sometimes it happens, it's fine, but you want to. You want to teach them the right habits, and, and that then self-soothing is, is the right habit. So it and sounds just, like as early as possible, try to I would start. say starting at like six to eight weeks is okay. when would implement that. At the beginning, definitely let your baby fall asleep on your baby. It's okay. <laughs> Anything <laughs> before Lauren, um, when you say self-soothe, I just want to make sure to like clarify that you right. don't mean that like at six weeks you put them in and then you don't. Comfort them oh no no! I mean, letting them learn how to fall asleep on their own. But obviously, you're still there for them, and you're still like helping them through and encouraging them. And you know, they need a pacifier. You can put a pacifier in. But what I'm saying is, like, babies learn how to put themselves to sleep. Like my son, for instance, who's two, he he. I want to say he comes to sleep. But it's not really a hum. It's more like a loud sound. He goes. Mm, and like that's a soothing mechanism to get himself to sleep um and you it's just what he does i didn't teach him that but that's how he relaxes himself my daughter who is four months she's like loving her thumb and i've had all these issues because i'm like what if she sets her thumb for so long and i don't know what to do and you know she likes her thumb and that's what makes her feel good and that's what helps her fall asleep so i think you kind of have to let your baby dictate that and figure out what makes them feel good and fall asleep on their own yeah, I echo um, everything uh, that they said. I mean, the first six weeks is really just about self-care and feeding and, you know, trying to kind of regulate that. Um, and the baby's going to sleep a lot, a lot, as all you guys know, in the first six to eight weeks without you doing anything, um, which is great. And then, yeah, around six to eight weeks, it kind of changes um, a little bit and there's more wake time happening and things like that. But um, agree that, you know, try putting them in the crib a week um, as often as you can, and also try learning what soothes your baby. So whether that's a pacifier, a swaddle, shushing, a little rocking, like all those things are totally fine to do. Um, and you want to figure out kind of what calms your baby and what is a nice routine you could start getting into before you put the baby down to sleep. Um, but yeah, really not stressing out in the beginning, really just kind of focusing on yourself, feeling good. Um, breastfeeding, bottle feeding, whatever you choose, just coming up with, you know, whatever schedule or kind of routine you're getting in with that. Um, yeah, just echoing everything you guys said. So. Is there anyone that's within six to eight weeks that feels their baby isn't sleeping a lot? And, okay, I just, when you just said that you're sleep a lot, I was like, yeah. why wasn't that my baby? So I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. want to make yeah. sure no one's <laughs> yeah. 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 doing yeah. well, I should say it's very yeah. irregular too. So some, I think this is my form of old, um, slept for the first eight weeks, she would sleep all day, and she didn't sleep much at night, uh, but day and night doesn't really come together until about six to eight weeks, and even then, it's still not great. So, you know, don't, yeah, oh. okay. right. Right. So that's very common. And how many weeks is it? For months? Eight and a half. Yeah. So short naps are really, really common and continue for, can continue for a long time. Um, so don't stress about that. Just make sure that the most important thing at this age is keeping the wait time short. So in eight weeks, like no more than 45 minutes to an hour for wait time, and then you're going to want to try and offer it 
So it's as a parent, it's our job to offer the mats, and it's the baby's job to take the mat. So you just have to do whatever you can to offer it, and if they don't take it, then that's fine. You'll try again, but it's our job to try and offer them as much as possible. So offering that, I love that way of describing like getting your baby to go the F to sleep. Um, <laughs> but you know what? What is that routine like? Yeah. What are those offerings? Yeah. Is it is it you know is it the blinds going down? Is yeah. it putting on light music? Is it talking to them really softly? Yeah. Like, what are those yeah. routines for you? Um, or those offerings? Yeah. No, it's it's different with every age, obviously. But at eight weeks, um, it can be a couple of things. I mean, if you wanted to do swallow, white noise, shushing in the crib. A little rocking, anything like that, I think it's fun to do in eight weeks. Again, try and focus on drowsy but awake. But it's really, at eight weeks, it's still really, it's you're still figuring it out. Um, but at eight weeks, if that means sometimes putting the baby in the carrier to go to sleep, then it's fine too at eight weeks. Um, not for every single nap, but if you're struggling all morning, you haven't gotten the baby a nap, and you know the baby's going to nap in the stroller or the carrier at eight weeks, we're totally fine with that. Um, but you know, you, you, you just practice, practice, practice. So the idea is that you're going to do less, you know, ergo naps and more crib naps and you work up to the majority of your naps in the crib. And I know that everyone's like different, different like philosophies and all that, but I think like what all of them are saying that I wish I knew was that within the first, I need to say, my best mentor said, told me half the that. The first three months, like you should really worry so much about like crutches and using like tools that you just never imagined you'd use, as long as it's like within reason and you're not like, well, you know, a, you know, relentlessly doing one thing like the carrier for each nap, but that there's things like shushing and rocking that you might be like, I'm not worried about envisioning my baby as a toddler doing this. That they're really not habits formed within the first weeks, mm -hmm. um, as long as you're not doing, I guess, like religiously for each yeah. sleep. And even if you are, they're easy to break at that age. Right. So there's lots of clients who come to us with yeah. babies who when they fall asleep on the breast on the bottle, being wrapped asleep then within a week or not. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's you know, you don't want to stress too much when they get in, but that's why you try to do everything you can to try and form healthy mm -hmm. habits, putting them down a week. But know that it's not going to work out. So, so Sari, what are what are those kind of routines that you would really encourage your moms and dads and nurses and people putting their kids to sleep? Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what would you recommend? Um. So, I mean, just like a nice nighttime routine to set to like give your kids the cue that it's time to go to sleep. So, you know, a nice bath or like a, a nice massage at night, um, dimming the lights, maybe singing a song, the bottle. So like all those things are just cues and signs that it's time to go to sleep. But everyone has a different way of doing it and it's fine as long as you sort of stay consistent and there's like somewhat of a pattern in what you're doing. Um, and yeah, and then again, like I said before, try to remember to put your baby in the crib awake so that they're not asleep on your boob or on uh, or with the bottle so that they are able to fall asleep by themselves. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the routine. In terms of the routine, because you know, I've heard it's about really consistency, but is it like, for example, the same song every night or is it just a gentle song? Yeah, I mean, you don't, yeah, I think it's just like somewhat consistency, but you don't always have to have a song. You don't. You you, you don't want to be like this regimented, crazy. Like if this song isn't played, something's <laughs> gonna go wrong. My baby's not gonna sleep tonight. That's not true. Um, you know, <laughs> totally, totally. You know, sometimes my baby will not be able to fall asleep without blank. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sometimes you know I don't have time to give my son a bath. And I'm like, wait, is he gonna be okay? He's okay. He sleeps. Nothing happens. So you want to try to stay consistent, but. You know, if you have to make it really short sometimes, that's fine. If, if if your baby's getting tired and you see that they're tired, it's more important to get them to bed earlier before they're too, too tired because an overtired baby is going to sleep as well um, and can wake up early as well. So you want to try to get them to bed quickly if they're tired. So if you need to cut things short or cut things out, that's okay as well. And then really, since we're on the question of routines, um, do you, and I think, 
Ariel was like eating this, but do you, I had heard things about like making it like during the day, like blinds open, but also some people even say like they should sleep in like the living room and a bassinet or something around more noise during the day, like to just like just distinguish between day and night. Yes, uh, with our practice, we... And when does that stop? Yeah, so as early as, as possible, we try to distinguish daytime and nighttime. That's associated with, like, you know, like, when it's daytime, you, you play a nursery rhymes or you talk to your baby a lot, and it's like, you don't have the whisper, even if they're napping. But it, when it's nighttime, you have dim lights, you have little white noise, and, and yes, and also the routine. The routine is very, very important. Um, um, nighttime routine is very important. With our practice, we actually have a daily night spa for our baby. So that spa is, um, you know, last feeding of the day. And then, you know, of course, you work and keep your baby upright for a while. And then you do the massage. And then you do that. And if you're just too scared that your baby ate too early for the last feeding of the day, then you can give a baby like a, a bottle of an ounce or five minutes on, on your go, go for a uh, top up. And then you, you know, put the baby to bed. And uh, some of my, well, I encourage my clients a lot um, to read a book. Um, speaking of the book, I always encourage for them to read uh, the same book every night. Why? Because at some point they get to memorize that book. So when it's time for the baby, when the baby's a little older and gets distracted, even if it's you know totally pitch black, they can still say and they can still like read a book because they already memorized it and and it's a good bonding actually with, with the baby so that's part of the reason that we really encourage. And so infant massage um, which is one of the most beautiful I mean when she says spa it's like literally a spa for the baby it sounds really ridiculous but it's like the sweetest thing ever. Um, do you have do you have any videos of, of your infant massage or is there any place that that we can look up what you mean by infant massage? Yes, we, I'm an, an infant massage instructor, so we're actually working on um, making a video and we're going to upload it very soon. So you definitely you know that, I mean, watch that video, very excited, because it's been something that all of my clients- When is it gonna be uploaded? <laughs> <laughs> People wanna start tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> no, no, really, when, when do you think um, it'll be available? We wanted to do it with an actual baby because okay. you know I've been uploading videos okay, so we've with a demo doll. Babies here, and so <laughs> baby to Paul get is here. By Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and because we have to see like when do we stop because you know you can't just be it's it's a total massage like from the legs and feet and stomach and chest and you know face and back it's like a total full massage if a massage, but then again you have to know when do you stop. Because you know the purpose of the massage is relaxing and calming. If the baby is fussy, then you just have to stop and say thank you for letting me massage you. We'll do it again tomorrow. Same time. <laughs> yeah. So you might be able to find some resources online. But if you'd like to wait, we can wait until Ruby uploads her video. It's gonna be some progress. Okay. <laughs> um, and do you recommend doing with any oil or or cream or um, organic sunflower oil? Is okay. very beneficial. Um, so that actually is what I, I recommend because when you massage a baby, it's like all the senses are working and you don't want the baby. Well, there's a lot of uh, massage oils that, you know, that are so soothing and relaxing, but you wanted your baby to smell you, you know, like the baby will hear your voice, will feel your touch. And also like your scent has to be also there during the process. So sunflower, so, sunflower oil, oil. Like, it's like a neutral yes. scent. So. Okay. So, um, and I know, I mean, all this is amazing, which I wouldn't have it, but, I know, so you're, yeah, you want no, but I also it. wanted, I wanted to make sure that those with, like, a little bit older babies also get, you know, information that they, you know, could find helpful too. So when we get into, and I think this is applicable anyway for a little bit older, but top sleep products that you think parents must have since the beginning, about, you know, getting the weight up, so I guess let's see products that fit for any age and what they are. You can get, get uh, specific. Sorry. Everyone wants to know specific specifics, right? I see shaking hands. Um, I love sleep sacks. I think they're great for a few reasons. One, it's like a nice part of your routine. Like, it's just like a step. Like, I'm putting my knee in the sleep sack and zipping it up. I feel like they hear the zipper. They know, okay, I'm getting it. Nighttime 
routine. Um, so pajamas, sleep sack. Exactly. And when do you start the sleep sack? Um, I start the sleep sack when you're out of the swaddle. If, if some people never swaddle. So some people do a sleep sack very early. Um, but if you're swaddled and then look, most people transition out of swaddle around 12 to 15 weeks, I would say. Um, and a lot of people switch to like Magic Merlin, which I really like too. Um, I use it with my first and I use it with my second. But um, sleep sack is great for after that because you need their arms free because they're rolling. Um, sleep sacks are great. I like Halo brand, but I like there's you know no special brand in particular, but it seems to be a big favorite. It's up until um, when do you use it? Forever, you can. No, really? <laughs> um, I used it for my daughter for 18 months and then she started saying sleep sack, so I stopped using it. But I have friends who have two and a half year olds who are still in sleep sack. Because it prevents them from falling out of the brain a lot of times. Some kids are like gymnasts and they can get out of the sleep sack. Um, it's not that safe. So that's, like that's a the really time. Good tip at some Such a good tip. tip. I'm dying one tonight. Yeah. So um, it's great. No, I really hope it's not too late. Halo size extra large goes up to like probably a, it's at least a two and a half year old, I would say. Um, but they're great. Um, so. So it's like the transition from a swaddle to a sleep sack. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, so I love sleep sack and the white face machine. Um, I love the dome, personally, and I now have the dome, which is like the travel version, which I actually like better than the dome, but um, it's great. It's portable. It's wireless, so it doesn't need to be plugged in, which is great. So great for hotels, great for, um, I mean, where did I just use it? I used it last weekend. Apartment because there were like six kids running around the apartment and the one was what was happening, so they're great. Great to have easy in their suitcase like this big. And is there any specific um, volume that you would recommend? I don't do them really Level? high, actually. Okay. Um, I do it enough so it's not like a fan going, okay. um, but I also don't put it right next to the crib. Um, so I put it somewhere in the room, maybe like five to ten feet away. But is there a specific reason for that? No, I mean, I've gotten, I, I've heard that, um, some, I've heard from people that they don't like the idea of the noise being close to the baby's head. There's been like one study done that, if you look into the study, it's not really the most valid study. Like they used it on a very high uh, decibel level and I wouldn't do it. But yes. Just don't put it right oh, next to I your really use it on a really high Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine to do. There's 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 really been no like real studies that show that there's anything wrong with it. Uh, and it's great for when they're babies because it kind of mimics the sound of like the womb being in the womb is what they say, and then when they're older it just kind of helps drown out outside noise. So when you're in the kitchen, if you're in a small New York City apartment, my kitchen backs up to my daughter's room, so we're always in there. Um, so they're great for that. But yeah, there are, there's no studies shown that they're habit forming. So, you know, I, I have them when I'm at home. Sometimes I travel and I don't have them. And I don't have them. So, yeah. Sarah, your top baby products. So I'm actually going to say nothing. <laughs> I think less and more. And I personally don't love the thought of having to, like, have my children obsessed with something that they can't live without it so yes I love sleep sacks and and white noise machines when necessary but I when I travel with my son or with my daughter I try to just like take as little as possible I feel like after and I like keeping things um you know keeping it as light, as light as possible so I try not to have extra stuff and the reason I figured this out mainly was was with my with my son who was a bad sleeper and I was just trying everything. It's like maybe it's this sleep bag, maybe it's that, maybe I should try essential oils, maybe I should try I tried everything and nothing was working until he learned how to become a good sleeper. And he didn't need anything. He needed his humming that I said before where he makes that noise and that's what helped him fall asleep. So, you know, I, I used to travel with all these things like, oh maybe he needs this stuff animal, maybe he needs this love lovey blanket. Maybe and at the end of the day, like he didn't need anything, and I was just trying to like throw things at his wall and see what stuck. And I realized that you really don't need much. Like they just sleep and they learn to sleep on their own, and they learn to like soothe by themselves, and they don't need a hundred gadgets and things and what's helping them sleep and alarm clocks and this and that. You know, it's just like too much. And so I want to say really nothing. And 
And I think that's just a great way for your baby to learn to speak with, with themselves. <laughs> but yes, it's, it, I mean, the speech talk is great and, you know, the sound machine is nice and whatever you think your baby might like, it's, it's nice, but it's not necessary. Well, the different perspectives, how about you, Ruby? Um, so with, with newborns, speci specifically with babies um, on, on, a, on the fourth trimester, so the first few months of life, um, swaddle uh, is definitely a, a must be, be always. What swaddles would you recommend? Uh, it depends on the age. The very, very tiny baby. Um, they Like if they're premature? Or um, yes, I, I recommend to have like the swaddle blanket, like just the blanket. However, um, you have to be able to master that. It's a skill, so you have to practice, practice, practice. Because if you if you can swaddle perfectly, it's dangerous. <laughs> because you know the baby would move, and before you know it, the, the blanket is all over the baby's face, and the, the baby can be suff suffocated. Um, but again, um, there's a swaddle called like wooly because it's stretchable. Um, I can swaddle very, very easily, and um, it stays snug, and uh, it's very cozy for the baby. Um, I also recommend uh, white noise. Again, the, the, the sound is different when the baby is asleep, it's you know, lower, but when the baby starts waking up, and you know that the baby can go, still go back to sleep, you can give the baby, offer a pacifier for babies, they give pacifiers, and, and adjust the white noise on the a little higher because I, based on my experience, most babies fall asleep easily when I do that adjustment and then I would just adjust again when the baby is into deep sleep. So those things, I, I, based on my experience, again, work very, very well. And again, with the swaddle, with the newborn, um, I, I recommend the blanket, but when they're a little bigger and moves a lot, I consider, I mean, I, I I um, introduce um, a Velcro one or yeah, the Halo or the Swaddle Me. There's so many swaddles out there, but whatever is more convenient and whatever my client would be more confident in swaddling their babies, because the technique is just to swaddle snugly and fast as much as possible. So there are different swaddles, and you can actually use different swaddles at different stages, different ages. And what white noise machine would you recommend? Um, Electrofan Mini. That's my favorite. It's literally just small. Mm -hmm. It would fit in your pocket. Um, it's rechargeable. It's like a Bluetooth, and it has eight different uh, white noise settings, so you can choose whichever. Um, How do you know which one is the correct one? That's the only thing. The challenge is you just have to listen to it, and you have to be familiarized because there's no like a digital. Um, like image that says, okay, this is number one, number two, number three. It's like you just have to get used to that, uh, but it's easy. Sure. Oh yeah, like but for sleep training, what are your philosophies, and is there anything? Try it out, 12 by 12, what are your thoughts? Oh yeah, we start with less, so we can start with that, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So, are we talking about some progression or philosophy? We're training. Are we training or regression? Yeah, we're all for progression. So I guess okay. let's start with sleep progression because that helps people with other babies. So, so, so that what I have issues that yeah. yeah. So there's always going to be some sort of sleep disturbance, whether it's, uh, you know, a developmental milestone, whether it's an illness, whether it's travel, there's always things happening. Um, you know, baby learns to walk, or there's new teeth coming in. Um, but if a baby knows how to fall asleep and stay asleep on their own, then then it'll be easier to go through these challenges and you know, babies will wake up and babies will need you and you always attend to them if they need you. But uh, at, you know, at some point, sleep is to them is more important, and they if they know how to put themselves back to sleep, then it'll be easier for them to go through these transitions. So, you know, if you travel somewhere and they they get a little wonky during the trip, they get back home and they're like back in their routine, they'll know how to get back to it really easily. Whereas, like if there's a baby that doesn't really know how to sleep on their own, it's going to be a much harder transition. So, um, I always say, you know, try to teach them how to handle sleep you know, 
on a daily basis, and then they'll be able to handle any of these challenges along the way a little bit easier than other teams. So when I said that Sarah came to me for help, it was because her son was waking up for her to be at two months. I don't remember. No, no, I don't mind at all, but I told her we told her that. <laughs> Jonah would wake up, and we thought it was because he wanted breastfeed and you were used to breastfeeding him so you were like I need to try sending in my husband but you couldn't it was hard yeah. for you to answer yeah, so crying. personally I had an experience where my where I nursed my son until he was 15 months so he was really attached to my boob and I just didn't want to break it and he's a very like strong like strong headed what's the word strong headed strong headed <laughs> strong willed baby and so he when he wanted something it was hard to say no and so I had to just like do a lot and it, go through many different obstacles to figure out what was happening and how to fix it and that's how I got into all of this um but but yeah it was really challenging and I had to like cut that and teach him how to fall asleep on his own and he finally did that but for a long time he was falling asleep on top of me and and I was placing him in the crib and then every time he would wake up he needed me again and so that's what I said before about it's very important teaching them to fall asleep on their own so they don't need you to put them back to sleep 20 times in the middle of the night. It wasn't like 20 times. But um, he was like it like once or twice, but I knew he wasn't hungry. I knew he didn't need to eat. It was just this path that we form where he needed me and it wasn't good for him or me because he his sleep was getting interrupted, which is not a good thing. And my sleep was interrupted as well. So, um, so yeah, that's how we figured it out. So... How did you figure it out? You just let him cry? So, he... personally, I went through a lot of different, like, sleep strategies with him where I was trying one thing and then I did something else and I, I was so inconsistent and I was so all over the place and that's why it took me so long to be like, okay, this is what I need to do to get it back on track and I started reading a lot and getting really into this and, and I tried a few different things and nothing worked until I knew what I had to do with my son, which was let him cry it out for a few nights um and and, that's what I, told you and I, I she's like i can't so it was and really I hard for me hard. yeah I, and i wanted to do like a check and console method where you go in and check on them and then you leave and then you try again and you leave and you keep increasing the intervals that you go in to check on them and that actually made him more upset he was so angry when i would come in he would get mad at me he's like why the hell are you in here we don't want you in here um he was just angry. You're gonna leave. Like, why are you coming in here? He didn't want me to see them. He didn't want me to calm him, calm him down. And I realized he, there are babies that do okay with that, and he just didn't want to see me. So that's when I had to, you know, pull off the bandaid and just do what I had to do. And it, it's fine. And I'm he's a great sleeper, and I'm no longer this like anxious mom of of a non sleeping baby. But I went through a lot to figure it out. And now with my four month old. Um, I set her on the right track from the start, so I never really had to sleep train her. She sort of did it by herself because I set the right habits, and she sleeps the night, she sleeps 12 hours, she takes three naps in the day, and she's like on a really good schedule, and I think it's because this time I knew what I was doing, and I knew how to put her on that path, um, and I know now what to do to not let it happen again, so that was my experience. We want to know those tips, but we'll get back to that. Yeah. So, or I guess, can you speak to, so that's amazing, but like, can you speak to what you do if like, you don't form habits, yet you still experience sleep regression? Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, so I'm a four month old and I obviously now know the, know what I'm doing. So I was doing everything which I thought was right, putting her down a week, setting all the good habits, and she was always falling asleep on her own. So that was great. Um, the problem was she was doing well and then about three months she regressed and started waking up minimally twice up to four times in the night um so i've been through this um and i'm still kind of in it but it's, it's a week ago so i just had to um i did like a, a fervor type of method so sort of what sari was just talking about so you go you check on them you put them down a week you set a timer for you go back, if they're still crying, go back to 10 minutes, you comfort them. And actually, it really worked well for my daughter. Like, she didn't get more in though. She's four months. So she actually... Also depends on the age. Yeah. yeah, she responded fine to it. Um, and then it was, it was quick, but the middle of the night wakings were probably the hardest. Um, and I did extinction for those. 
those because I just felt like work was exhausted. And I thought of getting up out of bed, doing the time back in the middle of the night. But it was quick. I mean, it was, I think, you know, the longest she cried was probably 20 minutes. Um, but I knew she was not. I knew she was bad. I got clear from my pediatrician that she doesn't, that she was eating enough, gaining enough weight, which is always what I recommend clients to do before they um, do any sort of treatment sleep training or taking away night feeds, always speak to your doctor first. Um, because as a sleep consultant, I, I sleep train with weeks too. So like if people are like, my pediatrician still says the baby needs to feed in the middle of the night, I say that's fine. You can still sleep train and feed in the middle of the night. That's no problem. Um, so don't think that the two are 100% related. Um, they can coexist. So um, keep that in mind. But yeah, so um, it's speaking about it took about five weeks for everything to come together. It's still not perfect. Maybe she's four months. But she's sleeping now 11 to 12 hours at, at night on average, which is great. Um, yeah, so, I mean, like, it works. Like, it's, you know, and it's it's painful, like you said, like, hearing her cry. I mean, it's 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 not fun. Even for 10 minutes, like, it's terrible. I mean, the only saving grace is that when I started this during bedtime, I was putting my two-and-a-half-year-old to bed, and I was in her room reading stories so I, I couldn't hear it as much and quite frankly just don't have as many hands to like cater to it so it actually helped because sometimes I'd be like okay I'm going to go check on her now and I'm like oh I don't hear her anymore um so yeah um but so yeah they sleep separately they did they sleep separately and a two-year-old member had a crush she did not she was a very bad napper in the beginning so I had to tweak her nap schedule around five months but she slept through the night on her own at like eight weeks I did not know nothing. So you, you might get lucky. I mean, you really might. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I, I, you know, I would say the only thing I did with her is I had a consistent bedtime of 10 o'clock. And, you know, I put her down at 7 every night. I didn't know babies really slept that early until I did, like, a mom's group. So I was like, yeah, babies sleep like 7, 7. I didn't really know that. Um, so I started, okay, well, that's going to be my bedtime. And, like, that sort of working. She started waking up less and less. And dropped feeds on her own. And, it happens. So, so what are their bedtimes now? Uh, the four month old's like six thirty, six forty five and this Wait to when, when to when? When do oh, they go to sleep and when do they wake up? She wakes up she wakes up around anywhere between six and seven. Okay. And how about the other one? Um, she goes about at seven thirty, sometimes she's fall asleep till eight, eight fifteen, it depends on her nap, which is a whole other story. Um, and she's up around seven, seven thirty. Yeah. Cool. Sure. I mean, I think another question is how you deal with sleep regressions when there are two in the same room. There is a toddler and a baby in the same room. How do you deal with that? And some some parents were asking about that. Um, what would you recommend? Yeah. I actually did deal with that once, and what <coughs> I suggested to the parent was put the, the, one of the babies in the room with you yeah. uh, until they're sleep trained. The better sleep. Okay. Okay, the better sleep room. Exactly. Until the, whichever one is sleep trained. So, we're, like, separate them, put one in your room, really whichever one, and, um, and then sleep train the, the bad sleeper and once the bad sleeper is sleep trained you can put the other back in the room. Right. Um, so that's what I would do. Okay. Interesting. So don't keep them together because they're gonna wake each other up and it's gonna right. get messy. So you wanna separate them during that process and then put them back together once they do. And so during those sleep regressions do you do like two sound machines? Do you do like how do you deal with because there are gonna be sleep regressions coming up no matter what, right? Um, well, I think like what I'm trying to get at is like, what if you like a perfect sleeper and you've had me for two months? Like I, or if you're like the type that's like, I never have to do sleep training, I never have to do cry it out, like I dodge that bullet and suddenly, like at 15 months, like, yeah, you don't have the tools or the strength to like open cry it out, you never have to do it. Yeah, in 15 months is never to do cry it out. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, you're not talking about yourself at all, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to I, sort of re retrain them, and if you never have to train them, then you know that they can do it. They can go back to sleep on their own. They've done it before, so they will be able to do it. You just have to set put them in the right direction. So you know, maybe a few nights, maybe like 
you don't really know what to do and you're maybe getting consistent and you go into the room and you go back out and you're like a little bit all over the place and then you realize like, okay, I need to organize this. I need to be consistent. I need to figure out what's going on and stick. To, if you need to sleep train, then maybe find like one sort of a method or a strategy that works for you. Be very consistent in that and then your baby will go back. It's just like making sure to put the right, you know, set them on the right path and not start introducing all these bad habits where you're going in and then you're taking them out and then there's like all this mess where there's no consistency even and they go down a bad a bad rabbit hole. So I think it's about just like and trusting your baby no matter the age. Yeah, they and, and they'll get back on track. You know, they, the right there point. are things that happen but they will get back if they have pretty good seasons. I mean, there are so many questions here. I think that we need like five more nights worth <laughs> of um, staying sane, go to get to sleep. Um, there's, I'm so overwhelmed. There's a lot. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, so can we say, like, we talked about like bedtime sleeping. Do you have tips for naps? You said that's a whole other story and. Totally a whole other story. Okay, so I feel like there's a lot of what do you do when your child just wants to play in the crib and not nap? Okay, that's one question. My four month old hates to nap. He'll only nap forty to sixty minutes. Hell, so I feel like a nap. Thing. How old? Yeah, this one's four months old. But like, even what about toddlers? You know, we'll there are some toddlers to who will minutes. who will nap two to three hours, and there are some that will only sleep thirty minutes. What do you do? Help. So, <laughs> I guess I there's like so. There's so, so there many pieces questions. to the puzzle here. Right. Like night sleep affects day sleep, day sleep affects night sleep. So it all sort of goes together. So it's hard to be like, oh, if this is the issue, you know, you have you have to look at it as a whole picture. But number one, maybe the nap times are not at the right times. Like there are biological times when your baby should be sleeping. Okay, what are those? On this age. Oh my goodness! Can so we, can we go through each of the ages? Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Someone and and also down. for a for a four month old, they're not mature enough to be able to stretch out their naps that long just yet so with time and patience they will begin to stretch it out um but it's normal for four to sleep like four minutes yeah. you know I, there was a minutes. mom that was like but i'm so jealous of my mom and she's baby sleep two hours and her baby slept three 45 minute naps instead of like the ones that have like so a two hours so if there, you stop not like fighting right. it right. Yeah. Kind of evolve, right? So how do you figure out schedules? I mean, even from day one, how do you figure out that schedule? Had I not had a baby nurse, I would have not known what the F to do, like when to put my baby down, when to feed them. So how do you know what the schedule should be from the get go? So, so, yeah, yeah I, want, I wanted to add on, on that because I have had 70 babies. I took care of them and I've seen them nap, you know, good nappers, bad nappers. And I just realized that they will have like a, a sleep cycle, sometimes 40, sometimes 50, and then they will go back to light sleep. So if there's like a stimulus that would wake them, they would wake up. But then if not, and they're good, you know, self-soothers, they can go back to sleep on their own and complete the two hours, two and a half, two hours and a half nap. Now, I've had like my baby right now, it's like, uh, she's just a uh, strong wheel. She would nap for 40 minutes. so. The schedule, just to give you an idea, so like the schedule is like what, 11 o'clock feeding, 11 a.m. feeding, and then after that one and a half hours, we put her down, so that's 12.30, and she'll sleep, and then 40 minutes later, on the dot, she'd wake up. So we try to put her back to sleep, you know, we do, we like, we shush her, we give passy, and then she just doesn't want a nap. And so we realized that she just needed one nap of 40 minutes, and then she's up, and then the next feeding would be three three o'clock p.m. because she's into every four hours feeding. So it just she cuts her nap into two. So she she'd sleep for forty minutes. She will be awake in playtime for forty minutes, and then try to put her back to sleep again for nap for another forty minutes to say, and then when she wakes up, that's the next feeding. So there are babies. I've had so many babies who were like that that they couldn't like stretch like we really have to have that good chunk of sleep because they're not very good sleep um, you know they, they tend to their themselves um, back to sleep so if they are ready to 
play, then play with it. Like, you know, take that time to bond with them and they will get tired. Usually what I do with like a four month old, like in between naps, she'd wake up, we'll do tummy time. We'll do lots of floor time so the baby will get tired and the baby will just discover her, her body, herself. And the more movement she, she does, the more she releases gas on her own. Because at that point, babies are so gassy. And, you know, we have to help them, like, massage so that they can pass gas. But if they can move a lot on their own, they can, they can find a more, you know, most comfortable position for them when they sleep. So they can easily go back to sleep or they can easily pass gas. So those things, you just have to, 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 to read the cues of your babies because what's the point of trying to put the baby down to, to nap again if the baby is not really into napping. So and I think it's safe to say that like it's it's different for different ages. For and that's sure. why we wanted to introduce them to you guys so that like if you have specific questions that you can go to them as a resource. Like I know that at you know three months old it might be like also feeding it's like maybe they're feeding too frequently so they're more gassy so or they don't eat a lot of it tonight, so they can't sleep for longer periods of time, but that's totally different when they're 11 months old and maybe they're starting to like have separation, or I mean at seven months old when they're starting to have separation, you know, it's so different and nuanced for different ages. So it's more like we don't want these questions not to be an, unanswered, but that like we hope and it's okay for them to go to you guys and be sure to reach out and like all their stuff is over there, but that we'll try and answer generally. like. You know, to just you know, see if there's needs to these questions. Okay, so do you want to see? Yeah, I, I have a few. Okay. Um, so my first theme is is eating in the middle of the night and night eating. So it says, when do you know when the baby's ready to eliminate night eating? How do you know if the baby waking up at night is feed or any other reason? How do you know if baby's ready to night wean to increase balance through the day? Suggestions for night wean recommended by doctor or one bedroom apartment. Um, so. I, I always start from your pediatrician. And so usually around four months is when my pediatrician says as long as the baby's gaining weight, he recommends night weaning at three months. This is his recommendation. His recommendation is to do a dream feed at like 10 or 11 and then no feeds until morning, so six or seven. Um, a lot of people aren't into the dream feed, so that might not be for you. Um, and then he says at four months, if there's, if weight gain is still good, then no more feeds. Um, but it's definitely a personal decision. So you have to be comfortable with it and you don't have to listen to everything the pediatrician tells you. Um, but like medically speaking, they usually can tell you when they don't need to eat in the middle of the night. And usually what happens is when they drop the night food, they start eating more during the day on their own, um, which is a good sign. Um, in terms of the one bedroom apartment, I'm living sort of that right now. Um, what you can do is put your baby to sleep like in your living room if you could put the crib in the living room for a few nights and do that. Or a lot of people put up like um, those partition things in between if you need like a space. Um, you can, like, air plugs, white noise machine. Yeah. If like if you're really bothered by you can, like, if it's really close to you, um, I would suggest as well. Um, how do you know if it's a feed or any other reason? This is why actually my pediatrician says doing a dream feed because he's, he says if you do the dream feed at 10 or 11 and let's say they take, you know, four ounces or whatever it is, then you know that if they wake up at two, it shouldn't really be because of hunger. Um, and at four months, the drive to sleep is much stronger than the drive to eat. So it's probably they're waking up because of the habit of waking up. And you can feel confident knowing, okay, I did this dream feed, so I'm not making you feel sick. I'm going to use whatever sleep training method I came up with until it's time to eat again. Um, there's more gentler ways to do it. You can, um, if you're nursing them all the night, I would suggest switching to a bottle first because a lot of babies just want, then you'll know, like instantly are they waking up because they come with the nurse? Because if they take a bottle, then okay, maybe they're hungry. But what you could do is like, you know, put like four ounces in a bottle, do that for a few nights, and then after a few nights, take it to three ounces, take it to two ounces until there's none left, and then they're kind of like, why am I waking up for one ounce? Um, so I know a lot of people have had success doing that, actually, um, but a lot of people just don't want to deal with the patients and like the rigidness of waking up at 3 a.m. and preparing a bottle. Um, so there's different methods to doing that. 
how do you know, how, how do you teach a baby to put yourself to sleep from when you do rock to sleep? Um, a lot of it's just consistency and rocking less and less every night. Like if you're rocking for 30 minutes, the next night rock for 20 minutes, rock for 15, rock for 10. Slowly try to get out of that habit if you want a gentle way to do it. I mean, a lot of people just cold turkey do it and then come up with like a check and console method where they're going in at intervals comforting the baby. Um, so there's a couple different ways to do that. So there's like a lot of very specific questions in here. I think we'll just go over naps again. Um, like Ariel was asking, what are the times for naps and what ages? So if your baby's around four to eight months, they should probably be sleeping three times a day. I want to say like four and a half, five months, just because when they're young, you know, they, they may need an additional nap in there. But ideally, the time, the biological clock for these babies to be sleeping is around 8.39 a.m. for their first nap. The second nap should be around 12 to 1 p.m. And then the third nap is a cat nap that is usually around 40 minutes. And that happens probably around like an, two hours after the afternoon wake up. And it's just like a short nap to bridge the afternoon nap and nighttime. Um, the first two naps are actually really important. The morning nap is mentally restorative, while the afternoon nap is physically restorative. So a lot of people think naps are just like there for fun and to give us a break, which yes, definitely they're there to give us a break, but they are important developmentally for the So it's good for them to actually get these chunks of sleep. Um, and then usually around eight months, seven, eight months, they draw the third cat nap. And at that point, you want to try to do a little bit of an earlier bedtime because they may start getting really tired, you know, earlier than they were before since they don't have that small nap in between. And at that point, they'll just be doing those two naps, the like 8.30, 9 a.m. and the 12 to 1 p.m. Um, nap. And then they get a little older, you want me to go through all of it? Yeah. And then they get a little older and probably around 15 to 18 months, they drop the morning nap and they just take one big afternoon nap. And then they do that for a while and usually they drop the afternoon noon nap when they're around four years old. Some babies drop it earlier, like three. Some babies drop it later. But most kids around like three to four are dropping their nap. Um, so that's, how the whole nap schedule goes. But yeah. Is there a time cap for the nap that might affect nighttime sleep? Yes. So, yeah. So you, it depends on the baby's age. Okay. Like if they're very young, it's okay for them to sleep, to take the cat nap around 4 or 5 p.m. But you really don't want them to sleep that much later because then it interrupts night sleep. Um, but the afternoon nap, you don't really need to cap that. Once they drop the cat nap, which is like the 4 p.m. like 4 p.m. nap a day, um, you can let them sleep in the afternoon nap from 12 until 3. That's totally fine and great. Or from 1 to you know, 3 or 4. You don't want them to sleep. Again, it depends on the age. You don't want them to sleep past 4 p.m. when they're like, to do it. So it, okay. it depends on the age of the baby and the situation and what time they really go to sleep at night, what time mm -hmm. they wake up in the morning. Like mm -hmm. it's all a, you have to look at it as a big picture because all the pieces of the puzzle come together. Right. Uh, it depends on the time they wake up in the morning, the time they go to bed at night. Um, but if they're on a right path, that's really what it should be. And sleep bedtime should probably be around six to seven p.m. Some babies go to sleep later and it's fine. Um, and, you know, some babies need to go to sleep earlier. Actually, a lot of babies will wake up very early, and parents think if they go to bed later, they're going to wake up later. But actually, the opposite. You want your baby to go to sleep earlier. Unless they are not cranky in the morning and they are they don't need additional sleep. But most babies who are waking up early because they're tired and they wake up really exhausted and they wake up crying at, like, 5.30 a.m., usually they're just overtired, and they should be going to sleep earlier. So they should be going to sleep even at 5.30 for a little bit until they're back on top, until they stretch that and you can then start like pushing bedtime sleep until later. But that's a really big like misconception where people think that they should put their babies to sleep late and they'll, they'll wake up late, but it's actually the opposite. When babies are waking up early, it usually means they're going to sleep too late and they're getting too short of, of sleep. What's a good bedtime? 
once they've established like a good nighttime routine. So it, again, it depends on the age, but between six and seven p.m. for like a for like a what are you thinking? <laughs> You're looking I'm like at me a like, bad mom. Yeah, I think, I mean, Around six, six and seven. Twelve, they say like. It, your life, it depends on also your you life. You know what, it's like, also really right. important because people don't realize that the first chunk of sleep before midnight is actually the yeah. deepest sleep for babies and the most restorative. So you don't want them to sleep too late because you're taking away from that like really good sleep. Even us as adults, if we go to sleep past midnight, we wake up, even if we wake up late, we don't get such good sleep. We need that, like, those, those early hours are actually really important. Um, so... So yeah, between six and seven is a good time. As they get older, you can do like seven thirty, you know, eight if they're much older. But like my son's two and a half, and his bedtime is seven p.m. He does not go to sleep at seven p.m. Yeah. And he wakes up at seven a.m. It's great. If I put him to sleep at eight p.m., he would probably wake up at six a.m. with hysteria. So you know, it's it it also depends on the kid um, and on the age. But usually between six and seven. 30 pushing is a good time. Is there any way to get them to sleep later? later? Well, she said that I know. Anything else? If they're, if they're <laughs> well rested babies, then yes, you can slowly push them and see if it works. Like 15 minute intervals every day, then they're like pushing them and see how that goes. But biologically, babies are not supposed to be waking at night. Some will, and that's awesome for all parents that can do that, but most babies biologically wake up between 6 and 7 30 a.m. and 7 30 is good so that's just how it goes <laughs> okay ruby yes i have here a question my baby four or five months does not sleep after night feeds for example he sometimes wakes up around 2 a.m or 4 a.m after the he fallen asleep around 7 p.m gets excited and doesn't want to sleep after the night feeds are there anything which calms the baby down while well, he's moving after five after months? Four to five months. Yeah. So obviously the baby's still eating, you know, feeding. Um, so what I usually do if the baby's still feeding at that time, um, but before I forget, so middle of the night feeding is any feeding after seven PM and before seven AM. And um, our practice is we do not introduce more than four ounces, no matter what the baby's age is. Because if you introduce six ounces past that, then it's hard to wean that off. So you wanted to just give four ounces maximum. And then um, for babies who doesn't want to sleep, let's say um, you're giving a bottle. My tip is for you to use a slower nipple. So if the baby's take, use, if you're using like a, a one nipple, I usually would switch that middle of the night feed to a creamy nipple. Or, or zero it depends on the bottle why because then the baby will like have um would would uh, take more effort to eat and then soon enough they will realize like i'd rather sleep than eat and it, it works it works really well um so but then again of course that baby still needs that calorie during the night and you're trying to win that off so you have to offer that at some point during the day that's why we also introduce some snack feeds in between full feeding until such time that the baby will just be sleeping and would, you know, up the appetite during the day. So, yeah, that's my suggestion. Um, try to make sure that your goal is to put the baby back to sleep. And, yeah, um, changing the nipple size helps a lot. Um, yeah, and then um, anything that calms the baby down, again, my practice is like the routine of of the baby spa, you would you do that though, like middle of the night or something? Oh uh, no, yeah. I think this is another question. This oh, is a sorry. different question. Like There's how no to calm down. Well, that's <laughs> She's I mean, not my here baby woke up last night. Be like you have to start the whole routine over again. Oh. You know, the night is there. Just like you know, there's uh -huh. those times. I don't know if they mean this, but like yeah. those times when like they're just not going down at the middle of the night. Like we, I would say, think about what you're sorry, doing. Like, like are you turning on a light? Are you making a lot of eye contact with the baby like really at especially at five months like try and make it in and out really quick in the dark feed or put down and like don't make don't give the baby any reason for he or she to want you to come back in like it should just be very quick and that goes with the toddler as well 
Well, well you're the probably the oh. doing no, if they're waking up in the middle of the night. Um, well, it, it depends on the whole situation. What's going on? What yeah. if you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. They can't. They can't. They can't tell you, or they're not telling. And they have been sleeping well up to this point. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it, I, you probably have to maybe retrain them and teach them how to fall asleep again and have space by themselves. Um, they may, you know, or, or they're going through something and it's just like a few days and it'll pass. But, no, you know, you, 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 you have to just stay consistent. And you're going to go in and say something great, but, you know, don't start doing all these things to see what happens, what works and what doesn't, and then start introducing bad habits, and then they're all confused, and you're all confused, and it becomes like this mess of a situation. So the idea is for you to just, like, trust yourself, trust your gut as a parent, and be like, what's the situation? Is this going to go away? Does my baby actually need me? Or are they just crying because they want to play in the middle of the night? You know, yeah, so there's questions about like what do I do when my child just wants to play or my eighteen month old. Right. So you five. you need to just as a parent like know what's going on. Like if they are in distress being with you, then yeah, you attend to that. But if they're waking up every night because that one night before you came in and you like cuddled them and gave them hugs and kisses and it was so much fun and they wake up the next night, then they're waking up because they loved what you did the night before. So you have to unfortunately break that and you know, let them know it's time to sleep, we can cuddle in the morning. <laughs> Um, and trust your baby's capabilities. Exactly. Like, and trust yourself. And if you're confident, your baby will sense that and will feel that and they'll be like, okay, my mom knows what she's doing and my dad knows what he's doing and I can trust them and I can go back to sleep because they know what's best for me and this is what they're telling me to do right now. <laughs> I feel bad that I was totally rerouted with No, it's questions. okay. I mean, there's another question here. I yeah. Should naps be capped at two hours? I think it depends on the age. <laughs> um, but most babies, um, again, based on my experience, they can really do like nap two hours straight. Some others would nap for 40 minutes, wake up and nap again before the next feeding. What time should last nap of the day? Not go past four thirty, five five thirty. It all depends on the age, and um, yeah, it depends on when they woke up like last. So I would, I would say for like a under, I mean, you can help me out with it. Um, under like four to five months, I would say like five p.m. is the latest, and then starting at like five months, start pushing it back like four thirty, four o'clock. Yeah, and they they should be awake by then. So the nap should start by the nap should end by four thirty by like five months I would say. The end of repeat that. The last nap of the day <laughs> should, should end by four thirty at like five months. Yeah, it depends their nighttime and when they wake up. But again, yeah, probably like by five PM they should be right. awake. That is it. Yeah, I'm um, I would say my four month old right now like five PM is like the latest. I will like let her like like I like to put her down so that she's up by five so I can put her down by seven because I don't want her to be up more than two minutes at this point. But as, you know, I did a twenty minute like five five twenty nap for a while when yeah. I was young, but like yeah. I don't I didn't yeah. know that was I mean, but it didn't affect right. me. Fine. But that yeah. like, that's like time free. I mean, like you know, it's it when they're younger, it's really hard to say. Like five thirty could work, and then. Right. Down to bed at seven thirty. It's seven thirty bedtime. Like, be fine yeah. for you. So, um, yeah. Um, I have one question yes. here. Is pacifier a bad crutch for nighttime? So it is if you have to go in twenty times to put the pacifier back in the baby's mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so ideally, you put it in their mouth, and then if they wake up once and want to put it back in, fine. But it shouldn't be this habit where you have to go in all night to put the pacifier back in. So. Usually it's best if babies, you know, babies go through different sleep cycles. So they go into deep sleep and then they go into night, light sleep and they go back into deep sleep. And so when they go into the light sleep, if they wake up and their pacifier isn't in their mouth or whatever the, the crutch was, whether it was, like we said before, the bottle or the boob, uh, if they don't have it, it's going to be very hard for them to fall asleep without that. So 
what you want to do is teach them to fall asleep without it. So it's great if they can fall asleep at night with a pacifier, but I wouldn't recommend going in there all night and really sticking it into their mouth because then they won't know how to do it on their own until they're old enough to do it themselves, and that will be a very long time. So, so I think, again, teach your babies to fall asleep on their own, stay asleep without having to have something. But if you want to put the pacifier in to fall asleep, at the start of the night, that's great. Just don't go back in there and keep plugging in. Say when they should end it if, if they're past the point of like when they need to do it themselves and like think of their age. Where they should stop using aspires. I that's such okay. a personal thing. Um, and that's also like something that you can speak to your like pediatricians about because I don't I don't know like, you know, it can affect their teeth and whatever else, speech and everything else. I I think it's fine. It's it's nice sometimes when babies have something that can remind them about, you know, about sleep. Like, they know that if they have to pass fire, that's their cue to go to bed. Um, but that's, like, a personal decision. Some doctors will say drop it between four to six months, like, cap it at six months. Other doctors say, like, it's fine. Just let them have it until they're ready. They'll leave it when they're ready. Other doctors are like, you know, by two years old, you should remove the pass fire. So I think it's more like a pediatrician question so some parents put like 12 pacifiers in their bed yeah. to make sure that like they won't have yeah once they can do it once they themselves. can do it so would you recommend that or would you say like oh i would still if it's helping them sleep and they're sleeping fine and they like the pacifier then yeah great i mean if, if it's become a problem then you fix it if it's not a problem then you don't need to fix it and doing like I had like the single one that they gave you in the hospital. I'm like, sure, you looking for and I'm like, what am I doing? Like, it's, like it doesn't change the habit. If you have just one, it just makes your life harder. So if you're gonna do it, put in twenty. Is my yeah. advice. Yeah. I put in four, but I just mean like, why put in a single one if you're gonna use it? What about a lobby that they like? They might have like fifteen of the or maybe like two others of the same exact one, but they just gravitate towards one because of the smell or whatever it is, what would you recommend for that? I like love these personally. Um, but what if they get attached to one? I think it's fine to get attached to it. It's better that than you, like mm. in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. So that way, because kids are going to wake up in the middle of the night. So right. better wake up in the middle of the night and they can grab their love and not fall through the phone. So that's how I feel about it. I mean, everyone feels differently about it, but um, no, I, I really love fine. Bunny too, but I'm just really afraid of yeah. losing Bunny. So right, <laughs> right. Get a replacement. Right. Bunny now. We have so a have... replacement. She doesn't go near it. Right. <laughs> it looks exactly like it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she right. knows. So you don't have to deal with them. Okay, okay, we'll not have it. it. Yeah, but again, ten percent of the time. But you know, don't yeah. break. Don't fix something that's not broken. Right. True. Sure. Sure. That's what sure. they say. So if you want to travel with it, fine, and then she'll grow out of it. Whatever, and it might be a couple of hours we forget it, but it's better than she sleeps 95% of the time. I think it's fine. I'm not worried about things that I need to worry about, right? right? Okay. I think what's hard now Stay with the lovies is they say nothing in the crib before one, which is really hard. It used to be six months from the AB and now it's one. Mm -hmm. So, like, as a sleep consultant, you're like, yeah, I just want to be able to get something. So, it's hard for me, it's hard as a sleep consultant to make a recommendation now, but most doctors, I would always say talk to your pediatrician. And just say, are you okay with me at like six months of like, getting her lovey? And most say yes, but obviously it's it's a personal decision. So you want to do those two like all your ones in there? Yeah. Okay, so the first one is how to bait break excuse me, a habit before bedtime, such as water, blanket, body one more time. <laughs> so the toddlers are really hard. Um, so there's a few things you can do. Um, a tactic I like is giving like three tokens and so that they know they have three tokens every night. So that means they have three times to ask you for something and that's it. So if you say, okay, here are your three tokens for the night, you can give them physically something. And they call in and say, I want water. Okay, you take one token away, they have two tokens left. And then they come in, I want this, you take. So then they know if there's no tokens left, there are no more requests for anything. Um, and you have that's it. Like, so you're kind of giving them some power. Here's like, you have this choice and you have a decision to make, but that's it. So have limited decision and you know that you need business after those. Where do you get these tokens? Well, I don't know, you can use anything. You use like a, okay. 
something that's super unusual, but like you know, it could be anything. Um, what, what, what do you use? Um, a symbolic. A symbolic. No, I, I yeah, know well, they were tokens. Yeah, no, like I three just, hair rollers. Exactly. <laughs> like, it just anything, like a symbolic of something. Just, yeah. What do you sure. use? Well, I haven't had to do this yet. Oh, okay. That's the plan. I'm kind of thinking. I don't remember exactly what they used. Yes. Um, maybe a, like a cup or something. Three right. cups. Okay. It's full of cups. Okay. It's solo cups. Okay. Um. And yeah, so then like that, I that they had success with that. Um, but yeah, it's all about being consistent. And at that age, when they're talking and all that, like you can communicate with them. You just explain here's the rules of tonight. Here's how it's gonna go. And once you're in your crib, like that's it. Um, and there's no request. This is the final request. It, it takes a lot of practice, a lot of communication, talking about it that day. What's gonna happen tonight at that time? We're gonna go to the potty. We're gonna make a cup of water and we're gonna the bed. That's it. And just kind of like gearing them up for it so that they know what the expectations are. And, and behaviorally, and sorry, behaviorally, I, but that's an age where they're really testing to see like who's boss and they want to not be boss. A lot of people don't understand that and feel as though, you know, like terrible twos is about the fact that like they now have the ability to talk and demand things and it's like this like power struggle and they're looking to us to be like their leaders and to be confident set and yes yeah, set boundaries not to like be wishy-washy with them that's confusing right. and makes them feel uneasy yes yep and i know ruby believes in this too but really also talking to your baby even if it's a newborn and out of respect um do you just want to talk about some of the things that you do when you bring a newborn home like you walk them around the apartment and I remember that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> so that's part of it. Like you're welcoming your newborn into your apartment. So yes, from the womb, it's like just a shock being out in the open. But then again, she needs to be incorporated in, in your life. This is a new world and this is where she's going to be in. So you, that's part of like the, what are you going to do? Are you just going to stare at your baby? Then just walk around the apartment and tell the baby like, okay, so this is the kitchen and this is where mommy uh, cook health, health meals. And, all of that stuff, it makes you feel good. And you talk to the baby and tell the baby, you know, it's, it's, a, ma it's a matter of giving respect. They're tiny human beings. They cannot talk. You can talk to them. And, and by hearing your voice, they get to trust you. You know, you ha ha they need to feel secure. Um, how can they be secure? You have to mimic how it was in the womb. And, but not constantly, you can do, you can do that. But then again, uh, since you're the primary caregiver or whoever is taking care of the baby, has to be able to 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 have that that trust. The baby needs uh, to gain a trust. And again, if you tell the baby what you're doing, you constantly talk to your baby. The baby absorbs that. Um, and you know, like. Spit up, for example. If the baby spit up, and if your reaction is like, "Oh my God, my baby spit up," and the baby, the baby will cry. Why? Because of your reaction. It's not because the baby's, you know, because of the spit up. Because after that, actually, the baby is more relieved. But then again, the baby will cry because of your reaction. So it takes practice. You know, it's it's easier said than done. But but again, it's your disposition. You know, the way that you you you're, you're how you are, you're, you're, you have to project that calmness because, again, if you're calm, your your baby will feel that, and the baby, your baby will be calm too. And then your baby will sleep. <laughs> There's one last question that we wanted to ask, and then if anyone wants to ask questions after a while, or make a little bit, um, what are some surprising wild for tips that you typically wouldn't fall asleep to, but you? you do with your own kids and you often recommend to clients um, or it doesn't need to be wild. Okay, I guess something that people don't really know is that a sleep in motion is not as stressful as sleep in non a moving whatever it is, stroller, car seat, rocking. So even even um a 40 minute nap in the crib is actually more beneficial than uh, an hour and a half nap in the stroller because when babies are in movement, they can't really go into deep sleep. So they're not getting the restorative sleep. So many parents think like, oh, I need to take this two hour walk so my baby sleeps, but actually it's much better for them to sleep 
a shorter nap in the crib and get go into a deeper sleep um, than be in, in a stroller or in a car seat and be sleeping, but they're like in a much lighter sleep where they're not actually getting this restorative sleep. And is that for every age? Like, yeah. Okay. I mean, even, even as newborn? adults, when we fall asleep on an airplane, they're not that like really sense. getting good sleep there. It's like you and wake up too, and, right? Like, and then you yeah, aren't. When they fall asleep in your arms. Yes, yeah, you're like rocking them. I mean, if you stop rocking them, then that's different. But if you're like, if movement just like doesn't let you really fall into sleep. Ruby, your wild card surprising tip. Oh, for me, it's more of uh, what I usually encourage my, my clients to do for nap, uh, for sleep, you know. Um, so most of the time, I encourage them to put their baby down to sleep. So when the baby's, you know, eyes closed, they're the last person that the baby saw. And if, 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 if the client, of course, has a baby nurse or some help, when the baby cries afterwards, then that person can take charge. But then again, you as parents, would have that feel that you put your baby down to sleep and that your face was the last face that she or he saw before he or she closes her eyes and in the morning it's the same thing if there's a chance for you to be able to be there when your baby wakes up it's more of like uh, feeling confident and more empowerment in your part as a parent so that if the dad goes to work then at least they have that special you know at least time together, even if it's a few minutes um, in the day or night. So that's something that I want to share. I mean, I would say mine is um, scenario I mentioned earlier, just uh, early bedtime. Um, always looking at your child, like around dinner time or before bed, like how are they acting? Are they fussy? Are they, for older child, are they not behaving? Like that's probably a sign that they're not getting enough sleep and that bedtime needs to be earlier. Um, and to what Sarah said, earlier bedtime feels later wake-ups usually. So I think someone on the card here will maybe seem like opening up at 5, 5.30. I would say probably maybe something going on with the nap because 18 months is very dark, one or two is what's hard to say. Um, something could be going on with the nap, but also potentially bedtime is too late. Um, and yeah, so that's like the number one reason kids get up really early is their bedtime is too late. So I always recommend Try shifting it from 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and see if you see an improvement after a couple of days. Okay, one last question, something I just thought of. But is there anything that you would recommend to incorporate into your baby or toddler's room that just adds good vibes, good energy, calmness for good sleep? I mean, I was thinking even of getting like glow in the dark stars to make them make her feel just more comforted, or do you like the idea of a nightlight? What's your what's your take on just adding good I, vibes into the room? I recently, like I said before, um, yeah. less have less less is more for me. But I do like essential oils, and I think they're nice if you can use them in the room. Which um, ones do you like? So there's a brand called DoTerra, mm -hmm. which you guys may have heard of, and lavender is nice for sleep. There's also one I think called Serenity, or and Vetiver, Vetiver is what you say. Um, those are all good for sleep, and it smells nice, and it's like maybe doing something. Again, I don't think it's necessary, but if it makes you feel good, and it, it's nice, it smells good. So that would be nice. Okay. I don't really think I'm no. actually thinking about it now. I mean, we have blackout shades in the room um, because we're based east, so it's very light in there. Uh -huh. But I don't have anything like special like that. But um, okay. Ruby, for uh, very small babies, I mean, well, it was good for us mm -hmm. or for baby toddlers, but mm -hmm. not with, with, with really uh, small babies. Um, blackout shades is uh, very helpful um, and white ones, basically, that's just what. Jenny, you recently got a giraffe. Did that help? Like a cute <laughs> life-size giraffe? No, I didn't get it for that reason. <laughs> Did it add good vibes? Is she sleeping better? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the light sign giraffe would be good. Um, all right. Um, lightning round. You guys ready? Yeah. White noise, brown noise, or no noise? Ruby. Brown noise. I literally don't like 
Um, I don't think it's <laughs> like a I actually got it from another sleep consultant like back in the day. I don't um, really know the difference. Okay. Okay. White no. noise is like more of a high pitch noise. So okay. white noise uh, basically is for babies who are crying. Okay. They need to hear their cry and so like, yeah. So brown noise is more for the deeper pitch. Yeah. Okay. Um crib, snoo, co sleeping. Go. Crib, 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 <laughs> crib. Um blinds up or down during naps. Down. down. All the way down. Yeah. We weren't asking you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, true, I do mine three quarters the way down because I feel like I want her to know that it's during the day. For very small babies, it doesn't really. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. What about a two year old? So for down. a two year old, I. Yeah, all the way so, down. So light. One of the best qualities. So. <laughs> they're going to wake and up because their circadian rhythms. They're not going to think it's night time. Interesting. Yeah, when it's dark, they, re- they release melatonin, so okay. you're you're keeping them up more instead of letting them fall into like that sleep mode. And they know at that age, they know what's day and what's night. All right, all the way down to hours. Hours. <laughs> All right, yeah. all right. So, now, stroller naps or crib naps? I think we know the crib. Um, I thought of another one, but I forgot it. So, mom brain, I think it's time to go to sleep. So on that note, um, thank you so much thank to our you. panelists. As you can see, there's so many questions, and I hope that we answered at least at least half of one of the questions that you came in with tonight. Um, if not, you know where to find these amazing women. And actually, on that note, please tell them your Instagram handles and your websites um, in case that they want to email you or contact you your consultant. Email. And yeah, we I will email you all. As well. our yeah, business cards. Um, and your business cards. Yeah. But just tell everyone your stats. Uh, mine's called Lolo Lullaby. And Lolo Lullaby.com. Yep. Mine's called The Chill Pill with one L on chill and one L on pill. <laughs> <laughs> I won't bore you guys with the story, but that's it. And then that's my Instagram and also my website. Okay. Yeah, so my Instagram um, and the blog is This Is Me Ruby. Um, but our company is uh, Beyond Baby Care. And just recently, we just. Um, we opened our um, an agency, newborn care specialist agency, which is called Pimba. So we actually have forms there. Uh, we I train personally train baby nurses and a lot of volunteers who want to volunteer their time to new parents, especially with newborns zero to three months for free. So if you're interested to sign up for that, we have a form there and take advantage of it. It's a huge help. Amazing, Jenny. How can People come here to Union Square Play, and how can they find you for your amazing tips as well? Well, anyone can come here and just come. <laughs> and, um, oh, and there's um, amazing program during the day. Yes, classes, mom groups, events like this, and workouts block in careers. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I share my philosophy and approach and how I'm spending my time with my baby. On my blog called No Mommies, and that's my website as well. And this is Union Square Play, UnionSquarePlay.com. And you can find me at BeWellRL on Instagram and BeWellRL.com. And then hope you all come to my new restaurant opening just three blocks away called Lucky Lee's NYC. It's going to be healthy Chinese food. And um, again, we're going to have hopefully a changing station if I can get it in time for the opening and um, it's going to be baby friendly so hopefully there'll be some purees for um, all of your little ones too. Um, on that note thank you so much for coming you tonight so and if you haven't signed up um, tonight we want your email so we can send you all of their info after so if you haven't signed up please see um, Jenny and she'll, she'll just sign you in. Thank you so much mamas. Thank you. Thank you.